So this is the third and final R34 that I will be buying. Um, so this one's had a big hit on the front corner and it has actually rolled. So that's why it does have all the damage through the front here. Um, pretty much every single panel on the car is no good. Um, there's a few little bits and pieces. So obviously the headlight and that front fender there are both fine. Uh, but down to the back of the car, you can see both doors all damaged, windscreen smashed, the roof's all caved in look right up there roof's all been caved in and that's just where it's rolled over so it is a stat ride so this car can't be registered the good thing about this car is that it does actually have an engine in it like you would have seen at the start of the video it is just a standard rb25 de so non-turbo but is a good motor it's got the compression we tested that when we picked it up so it has compression has a manual gearbox already to be dropped in we picked it up quite cheap so be pulling the engine and gearbox out of this car and we'll be putting it into our main car so today i'm just going to fix up the steering components just so this car can roll so the hip that's damaged the front end has actually bent this steering rack arm here usually that will run straight across from one side to the other and be perfectly straight we can see this one has a massive big right angle bend in it so that causes that wheel there to be at a constant angle so when we're trying to steer that wheel doesn't move which is obviously not all we want we're trying to bring it in and out of the workshop so just to make things easier for us i'm going to fix that arm and we're going to fix this lower arm here which you can see has a bit of a bend in it as well so luckily for us we have a whole spare front cradle upstairs so we'll pull off the bits we need and swap them over with these ones the so next step for the rack and we're going to take off this little steering boot here so there's a clip on each end so we'll pull those off and then that boot just slides off the end and then connected to the steering rack there's like a knuckle so we'll have a big pair of multi grips and we'll just crack that and then you just undo that by hand and you pull the whole piece out and replace it with the new one. So it's hard to get the camera in a good kind of spot. This is the best spot I could find. So I'm just gonna leave it here as I pull it apart just so you can have a bit of an idea how to do it if you need to change the steering rack end yourself. So let's get stuck into it. So like I was saying, start with pulling off this top circlip. Yeah, so bend that top piece back. And you just knock it out from the other side and then just grab your pliers and lever it out the rest of the way. So there's your circlip. So you want to replace these after you're finished with them, obviously. Um, this one will just go in the bin. It looks like it has been changed before, so we'll keep going. So on the 34 Skylines, it is a 19mm bolt on top of the rack end. So if you're lucky, if they're loose enough, you might be able to get a ring spanner on the end and just loosen it so luckily this one's quite loose so you can just undo it by hand obviously because it's been in the kit and it has impacted a fair bit it will be able to just be undone by hand the rest of the way most of the time you will need to get a rattle gun with a socket on the end of it just to undo these because the actual ball joint spins on the spot so you need a bit more force than what you can do by hand um, but got lucky with this one here so we'll just pull this off so there's the nut that sits on top you can see it's got these little locating lugs and your circuit goes through those and there's a little hole in the top of the thread as well so you just line those two up and then slide your circuit right through the middle just by pulling there see the thread's not moving but the actual ball joint is so you need to impact the area where it is going through and that will drop the whole piece out so usually you can do this with a big hammer and you're just hitting right on that edge there you know, one hit and that's just dropped right out okay so there's our rack undone so that's all dropped out from the wheel so like you can see now the wheel actually has the movement in it to go back and forth it's not being restricted by the steering rack so next step we'll be pulling the boot off so get your pliers that you had before and there will be two little clips one clip and the other one is a clip that you will have to cut Sometimes if you're lucky, you can just twist them on the spot and they will break away. There we go. So that one there is just popped out. 
so we want to slide this right out of the way. There we go. So you want to get a fairly large screwdriver just to pop off these locking tabs. So you just pry those out of the way, all corners. You can see this is where it joins on here. So you want to get a pair of big multi-grips and just crack that and then we can spin it off the rest of the way. So you get a big pair of multi-grips, hopefully it won't be too tight. So just get your multi-grips on the flat faces and you just want to grab it and turn. So this is our old rack end, like you can see, big angle in it. They should be perfectly straight. So from here they should run straight across. Um, just from the impact, that's what's pushed this one to the side. So I'll go pull the other piece off our spare steering rack and I'll put it back in. So this is old versus new. Obviously it's not a brand new piece, it is off another car. Um, so it does have a split boot in it. But you can see how they're meant to look and that's why it wouldn't steer properly. So the only point of this is just so we can get the car steering properly. So we'll start putting this piece back in. So that's the end of the steering rack there. Don't know how well you can see but there is a thread inside there. So on the end of our steering rack after you peel back the boot we'll have a thread as well if it will focus. So all we're doing is winding that thread in. You can just do this by hand to start with just to get it started bit fiddly to start with but you'll once you get it started then it's pretty straightforward from there so you want to wind that in as far as you can by hand and then get your multi grips back on it to tighten it as much as it can usually when you buy these brand new they'll have a special locking tab which locates into this little lug up here and that lug down there and you just pop the tabs in and that stops it from coming loose but like I was saying we're not going to be driving this car it's literally just to make sure we can roll it in and out of the workshop without having to push it so it's about as tight as I can get it by hand. So you just want to grab your set of multi-grips, which I've put somewhere just down here. So grab your multi-grips and just keep tightening. So that's nice and tight. Now as soon as you feel it bottom out, you just want to go another half turn as much as you can by hand, and then that'll do so. Next thing we'll do, slide the boot back over the top to keep the dust out. Won't matter too much on this one since it is already old and has some movement in it. So slide your boot back on, there's a little lip you'll have to slide it over. So after you've got your rack boot all slipped back in, then you want to slide the threaded piece back through the hole which you released it from before and put the nut back on. Same deal, get a spanner on it. If you have access to it, get a rattle gun and a socket and do it as tight as you can. And then once that's done, make sure your little holes line up. Just through that little crown piece there, there will be a hole in the thread. So just line those two up and pop a new circlip through it. So push it through, bend one side up over the top. And then what I like to do with the other side is just wrap it around the nut. And this is one of the most important steps because if that nut there comes undone, this circlip will stop that nut from spinning all the way off. And obviously if it spins all the way off, racking will drop out, you lose all steering on this wheel and it will pop out um, and cause some serious problems. So always use circlips if there's a space provided. This is gonna be the last little step to fix the steering. I've gone and grabbed an auto steering wheel out of one of the auto shells I have sitting at the front and I'll put it onto this one. I'm just gonna try find a nut that will fit it and then we can make sure that all the steering works and obviously we don't want the steering wheel popping off either. So I'll go find a nut and then we'll put that back on. It's always good to keep spare nuts and bolts lying around in situations like this. So here's one that I had lying around. Got no idea what it is from, but fits perfectly. So we'll chuck that on um, and then our steering wheel can stay on and we'll be able to steer it. So obviously you wanna make sure that your wheels are straight and then slide the steering wheel on. just so that you can't pull it off when you're trying to steer the thing because it makes it very difficult to do. Um, we tried to bring this off with no steering wheel, so definitely made it difficult. So that's all done now. Nice and tight, not moving around. It's turning both of the front wheels. So it's just gonna make it a lot easier for us to bring the car in and out of the workshop um, without having to drag a tire that won't turn. So that is awesome. This is the end of the video. Obviously quite a short one today. It was just giving you a bit of an overview of the car and fixing a few little bits and pieces up just so it was ready to move. So next thing we'll be doing is pulling the engine out of this one, putting it onto a stand, 
uh, and changing things like the rock cover gaskets, spark plugs, coil packs if need be, just to make sure it's all ready to go in the new car. Um, so like I was saying, we did a compression test on this one, we picked it up and it had good figures, so it had 180 across the board, apart from cylinder three, which had 160, so nothing major, um, probably just a, a ring starting to wear out, but it's nothing that's gonna be a problem for us. So that's all good, we pull the engine out, take off what we need to, we'll probably pull it out with all the loom, so we'll unclip the ECU, pull that through the firewall and pull it out with all the plugs still connected just to make things a bit easier for us. Um, and then this Wednesday is when we're having the front cut off the other car. So as soon as that's ready to go, pull the engine out of this one and drop it straight into that car. Hopefully we'll be able to turn the can and it'll all work. See you next time.